Hey guys, this is Sandeep from Revitalism. and welcome to yet another video and today we'll be taking a look at the camera review of the Samsung Galaxy S21 5G smartphone. Now before we get this started, please do make sure to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications to avoid missing any videos from us in the future. Now let's begin. The S21 comes with a triple camera setup which comprises of a primary 12 megapixel sensor that has 1 by 1.76 inch sensor size, 1.8 microns of pixel size, f1.8 aperture as well as OIS. You also get an ultra wide angle camera which also features 12 megapixels in sound resolution, 1.4 micron pixel size and 1 by 2.55 inch sensor size with 120 degree field of view and f2.2 aperture. The last sensor features a 64 megapixels of resolution along with f2.0 aperture and this is not exactly a telephoto camera but it is capable of delivering up to 3x lossless zoom. Now we'll discuss more on this later on in the review, now let's get started with the image quality itself. Now it's been a while since I reviewed a flagship Samsung smartphone in terms of its cameras but I had tried quite a few over the past couple of years and I feel that they have gotten better but some of the usual Samsung traits are still there in a smaller proportion. The phone has great dynamic range, you have fast shutter speed as well as a quick focus but it has some issues in the form of not enough sharpness due to excessive noise reduction and slightly watercolor sort of effect which definitely has become less compared to the previous generations of Samsung Galaxy smartphones but it's still evident even on this particular smartphone. The other trait that the Samsung S21 continues to exhibit is in the form of more saturated looking photos. Now while this too is dialed back down and not quite as aggressive as some of the older generations, it is still evident compared to some of the more natural looking phones. But one thing that Samsung has really nailed is the fact that there is great consistency across all three lenses. So regardless of whether you're using the primary, the ultra wide or the telephoto, they all look more or less identical to each other and there's no major difference in the overall image processing or colors and that gives you the impression that you've actually captured photos with a lens that can zoom in and zoom out but the same sensor but the actual truth is that they are completely different sensors. So kudos to Samsung for that. In terms of low light performance, normally what Samsung used to do was apply excessive noise reduction which led to loss of detail but still they had high levels of noise. This time around you actually have much better details and sharpness than ever before but at the same time you also have very low noise and in fact get very clean looking images when you go even in very dark situations just by using night mode. Speaking of which the night mode is also much better than before and the difference between not using night mode and using night mode is also much more evident now on the S21. The ultra wide shots give a much more dramatic field of view and a better perspective especially if you're capturing landscapes or large monuments or large groups of people and the overall quality is also pretty good although when you pixel peep you can definitely tell that these were captured with the ultra wide angle camera owing to the higher levels of distortion, slightly less sharpness in the corners and aberrations as well but this is still one of the best that we have tried overall on any smartphone in terms of ultra wide angle performance. Let us now talk about the 64 megapixel telephoto sensor. Now this exactly is not a telephoto sensor because optically speaking it has roughly the same focal length as a primary camera. It has 1.1x magnification which is slightly narrower field of view than the primary camera but what you can do is thanks to the extra megapixels or resolution that you get with the sensor, you can essentially go all the way up to 2x and have a telephoto sort of photo by cropping in and not actually have any issues in terms of the overall image quality itself. Now while Samsung does advertise up to 3x of lossless image quality, anything beyond 2x and we did notice a drop in terms of the overall image quality, sharpness and contrast but at the end of the day these are also very much usable and I would say practically speaking Samsung is right to still call it as you can still get good results although you can go all the way up to 30x in which it becomes quite unusable. Portrait mode is yet another aspect where I find Samsung has made great progress especially in terms of the edge detection and blurring algorithm which in the past has been just about finding an object, masking it and blurring everything else behind it but now it's become more or less linear and makes use of proper depth detection in order to blur the image or the portion that is desired and not desirable for instance. While we are on the subject of portraits, it's also worth mentioning that skin tones are also rendered much more better regardless of whether you're using portrait mode or not and this is also an improvement compared to a previous generation and we also find that live focus mode is now actually called portrait mode like every other smartphone on the market. 
Coming to a front facing camera, you get a 10 megapixel f2.2 dual pixel autofocus camera, which actually works really great. And the overall quality is excellent and the dynamic range is spectacular as well. You get sharp photos with good level of detail and even the portrait mode does well in terms of edge detection and blurring. Here too, we notice that Samsung has gone for a more detail rich approach compared to the softer looking approach that they did for the older generations. Coming to the videos aspect, you can record up to 4K 60fps using the regular and ultra wide angle camera and up to 4K 30fps using the telephoto camera. Video quality is great and is consistent across all cameras and I feel that the S21 is one of the best video recording smartphones on the market as well and only thing that beats it is probably the iPhones that are available right now. Like I said, it's been a while since I did a camera review of a Samsung flagship smartphone. Now I would say that in the past I could not really recommend some of the Samsung phones because their image quality was not all that great, they had issues even in terms of video performance and while it was better than some of the other Android smartphones out there, it definitely was not the best. I'm happy to say that this time around I feel that Samsung have got a real win on their hands and they're off to a very good start in 2021 and I feel that the S21 5G is definitely the best camera phone from the Android cam currently. Of course you can go for the S21 Ultra which would even take things further but I don't have my hands on that yet and you again have to pay a higher price for the same as well. For what it's worth, Samsung has had great display experiences, great performance and great hardware for quite a while now, but I finally feel that the camera performance can also be classified as being great. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comment section below. See you again in the next one and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button.